Which unexpected but very major connection lies between Johnny Lawrence and William Zabka? Why was it really hard for Billy to play the same character again after 35 years? It's been painful to play this character. I mean, really. And how come Ralph Macchio was actually afraid of Billy Zabka before their first scene in Cobra Kai? Hi, I'm Clive, and here are the hidden secrets behind William's most iconic character. <laughs> Life after the Karate Kid it's been 35 years since the iconic crane kick, and where did William Zabka find himself? No, nothing like that. But frankly speaking, after The Karate Kid, his career didn't become as successful as Ralph Macchio's. And if Ralph received Miyagi's famous car from the movie at the end of the franchise, William's only present from the set was the old headband and a broken second-place trophy. After his portrayal of Johnny, Zapka struggled with being typecast as the bully. Greg Tolan doing wedgie reps with a freshman's underwear in Just One of the Guys and a douchey boyfriend in National Lampoon's European Vacation are just a couple of the many other bullies Billy portrayed through the years. It wasn't exactly the career of his dreams. In fact, Zapka always wanted to become a filmmaker. My first love has always been behind the camera, he stated in one of his interviews. You probably didn't know this, but Billy has directed tons of independent films. More so, he was even nominated for an Oscar for co-writing and producing the film most. Nice! But the role of Johnny Lawrence followed the actor throughout his career, no matter what he was doing. Do you know that he even played himself in the music video, Sweep the Leg, Johnny? There we can see Zapka in a pretty similar situation as his character in the opening scene of Cobra Kai. You have a problem with that? No, Sensei. You're revolting. After that project, we saw William Zabka talking about the Karate Kid once again in the famous scene from How I Met Your Mother. During the episode, Barney shares a popular fan theory that Johnny Lawrence is actually the Karate Kid and not Daniel. Hey, you're one of the few people in the world who truly gets the Karate Kid movie. <laughs> William Zabka! Probably this exact scene gave the creators of Cobra Kai the idea for the spin-off. Truth be told, Zabka was happy about how things turned out for his career in movies. I've always had a hand in one aspect or another, and I've been equally content and happy. It's been nice to be off the grid a little, to be honest. But oh boy, did he become even happier when Cobra Kai came into his life once again. Awakening of the Cobra don't mess with our baby. Don't mess with our unicorn. That's what fans reply to any mention about a Karate Kid spinoff. The concept of the grown-up characters of Karate Kid felt like something shitty, another meaningless project to get some money out of the cult movie of the 80s. But these three men proved that the Cobra Kai story is nothing like that. They all were huge fans of the Karate Kid and loved the idea of seeing the show from Johnny's perspective. The only thing they had to do was to persuade William Zabka and Ralph Macchio to participate in their project. And that definitely wasn't an easy task. Here's what Billy's reaction was when he first heard the offer about a Karate Kid spinoff. I mean, the best way I could explain it is if you had forgotten about a girl from years ago and you got an email saying, meet me at, you know, and you're like, what, is, what does she want? Yeah. The show creators Josh Held, Hayden Schlossberg, and John Hurwitz knew that they had only one chance to convince Billy, and so they did everything they could. They spit-fired this at me. And it, was, uh, it was a slow waking. You know, I was like, it was like the Johnny Lawrence of me opened his crusty eyes. And, yeah. Zappa couldn't believe that his character would finally be the main hero of the show, and hashtag justice for Johnny could finally be achieved. But it turns out that convincing Billy was the easy part, and the showrunners faced an even bigger challenge pitching the project to Ralph Macchio, who was known for his overprotective attitude towards anything connected to the Karate Kid legacy. But even he couldn't say no to such a passionate and powerful story. Honestly, the show creators were quite smart. They didn't reveal the fact that the story would be told from Johnny Lawrence's point of view. They pitched it to Ralph as a story about bullying and only mentioned the rest of the details afterwards. First, they proved that they knew the DNA of the original movie to perfection. Then they dived deep into LaRusso's character, presenting Ralph with the new challenges he would face in the series. And for the dessert, they left the fact that Daniel would continue teaching the Miyagi-Do philosophy, which probably melted Ralph's heart. But I believe they were the guys, they wanted to make the show the fans wanted to see because they were those kids. It wasn't only curiosity that Billy and Ralph felt about the upcoming project. For instance, William Zabka was totally unprepared for the challenges he would have to face, playing Johnny once again. I don't own Johnny anymore. Zabka loved his character and never imagined that Johnny would be living such a shitty life, as we see him in the opening episode of Cobra Kai. So it was rather disheartening for Zabka to realize that Johnny was totally stuck in the past. 
I, was, I mean, it's been painful to play this character. I mean, really. That moment when I'm in the dealership, because I had a whole lot of other things I would have wanted, my instincts were what I would have wanted to say to Daniel, and so uh, I just... I just felt the truth. But what was the main question? At first, it was really devastating for Billy, so he didn't really craft his role. And the actor revealed that sometimes he even performed things that, firstly, he was totally against. And then sometimes they push me in places where I don't want to go, and I go kicking and screaming. And uh, But they're usually right. Mostly they're right. But eventually, Zabka agreed. It's about trust. You can't do it all. You can't act and be objective at the same time. You should trust your creative writers. But that understanding didn't make it any easier for Zabka to portray Johnny. And after shooting one of the first episodes, he had to accept an ugly truth. There was one night when we did Karate Co uh, Cobra Kai season one where I went home from work and I, was, I realized that Johnny Lawrence isn't me, any, isn't mine anymore. And one more ugly truth came out on the set of Cobra Kai. It's harder to strike back when you're 53. No mercy. When Billy played Johnny for the first time, he was a young and full of energy 22-year-old guy. So, of course, more than 30 years later, it was tough to get into the same shape. Karate is like riding a bike. You jump back into it, although your joints can be a little bit different as your muscles can get sore. Zabka did train in martial arts for years after the Karate Kid, but in recent years, he had kind of fallen off the wagon. He gained weight and wasn't really ready to strike first. But the showrunners made him practice karate, taekwondo, strength conditioning, and cardio during the 12 to 14 hour workday. Plus, eating a diet of lean protein and vegetables totally paid off. And that's why Zapka is smiling so much in this interview while talking about the stunts. I do all my own stunts, yes. Shut up! I do, I do all the. Still? All, still, yes. Uh, no, no, <laughs> it's so great. Yeah, well, all of them, except, uh, except some of the motorcycle stuff. I don't drive the motorcycle. That's right. Billy did everything he could to become a true sensei. Such devotion to Cobra Kai isn't the only thing that Billy and his iconic character have in common. There's something more, and I promise you'll be surprised to find out what it is. How much of Lawrence is in Zabka? You can't imagine Johnny without a can of Coors Banquet beer in his hand, right? It's always there to ease his pain. While some more jaded viewers probably believe the constant features of Coors means they are a sponsor of the show, Zapka is here to let you know that's not the case. It was just the perfect fit for his character, especially because it shows just how much Johnny is out of his present world and stuck in the past. Funny enough, it turns out that Coors was actually the first beer Zabka ever tried, and that back in his teens, he actually drank it every summer while painting the fence in the backyard together with his dad. But frankly, that's basically the only similarity between Billy and Johnny. As in reality, Billy was never a bully. He is the nicest guy, even a bit dorky. Actually, when Zapka was filming the final scene in The Karate Kid and the whole live audience was booing at Johnny, William's mom, who was a part of the extras on the set, was screaming, Oh no! He's a good guy! He's my son! But her words weren't convincing enough for the real bullies of the valley. Can you believe that after The Karate Kid, the bad guys from the valley were waiting to fight Billy for real to check out his karate skills? Billy found this out from his close friend and frankly didn't know whether he should laugh about it or be scared. But that was a long time ago. And today, Zabka is a devoted family man with a beautiful wife and two wonderful kids. His little girl is nine and his son is five. Unfortunately, they've never seen the Karate Kid movies. His son did see the trailer for the Karate Kid once, though. So, on his way to school, he asked his dad why he was in a skeleton outfit beating up a kid. Awkward. But we're sure that Billy found the best way to answer his kiddo. One more drastic difference between Billy and Johnny is their choice of cars. Can you believe that Billy is not a car guy? I'm a Jeep guy. I have a 1985 CJ7 Laredo four-wheel drive that I've had since then, so that's my thing. Although, I'm digging the cars they give me on the show. The Firebird's cool. I like the old ones. And to be totally honest with you, in his childhood, William Zabka was more similar to Daniel LaRusso. You see, Billy's dad got transferred to California when Zabka was a kid, and he lived through the struggles that Daniel LaRusso faced once. I was a fish out of water with a weird accent and a funny bike, and I had to make my way in the first couple weeks and months of California and try to blend in. Now, there's only one question left unanswered. Why was Ralph Macchio actually afraid of Billy Zabka on the set? It's true! Ralph Macchio was afraid to come back to the role because of Billy Zabka. In his interview with Jimmy Fallon, he revealed that he was really terrified of what would happen on the show, as he thought that Johnny, who was considered to be a dick of the 80s, would be a little bit pissed about the illegal crane kick. 
and that Billy would probably want to see some justice for his character and prove that Daniel LaRusso wasn't really such a nice guy. Funny enough, his fear almost came true. When the two finally met at rehearsals, Billy wanted to repeat the stunts again and again and again, which made Ralph a bit worried. Especially when Billy suddenly said that Ralph shouldn't worry about rehearsing the fight, as it was just pretend. Then Ralph was like, Dude, we will still be pretending while filming the scene as well, right? Of course, no one really punched each other in the face, but Billy did make Ralph worried as hell. Billy was worried too, but for another reason. He wasn't sure whether they would have the necessary tension on the set, as Ralph and Billy are really good friends behind the scenes. Plus, don't forget that they didn't really act together for more than 30 years. Fortunately, the chemistry was there. It was the first scene we played in 30-something years, and it just instinctively had a chemistry about it that we didn't even know we had," Machio told Pop Culture. William explained that the first scene he and Machio filmed together was when his co-star's character, Daniel, pops into the dojo in season one. That was the first time we were on camera together as Johnny and Daniel, Zapka said. And when we were done, it just felt alive again. Like, no time had passed at all. No doubt the fans enjoyed watching this scene as much as the actors enjoyed filming it, didn't you? Share your thoughts about that iconic scene with us in the comments below. And as always, thanks for staying awesome!